praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bethany Apostolic Community Church here in San Diego. Wherever you are, give God our praise on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be alive this morning? Hallelujah. Anybody glad to have his spirit this morning? Hallelujah. We give God glory today. Somebody is mourning today, but we're in heavenly places today. Clap your hands wherever you are. Living in the bedroom. Give God the word. And I pray she has got the word this morning. And give God the first truth of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
when you gather, watch who you hang with. Because when they flip the script, you can flip the script too. But I thank the Lord that uh, he's been the same ever since I've known him. Under the tutelage of Bishop Howard A. Swansea, one of the great Pentecostal giants, sat under his ministry for years. Let me thank God for him. Watch it grow, watch it mature. I feel God in here today. Y'all sitting here quiet. I said, I feel God in here today. I'm going to say this and I'm going to quit. Whenever you hear truth, you better open up your mouth and give God glory. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. So if you recognize God, God will recognize you. But if you don't recognize God, the Bible said that God's not going to recognize you in front of his father. So when you hear truth, if it's from a child, you've got glory, you've got praise. Y'all still ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Because the truth is going to what? Set you free. And guess what? There's somebody sitting next to you may not know what truth is. And when you declare truth, then they have to declare truth as well. And I'm not making any sense here. Hallelujah! So with no further ado, we want you to clap your hands as Ella Keith Maddox come and preach the words of life into us on today. Hear ye him. Clap your hands for a minute. Hallelujah!
comes in tears. I love it when he comes in tears. Salutations and greetings to you. She wasn't able to be here today, and I don't have to make no excuses. You know, sometimes preachers make excuses why their spouses don't come. I'm glad I don't have to do all that. Either she come or she don't come, but I do honor the Spirit of God in her. She was in the class today and been in the class for the past couple of days, and so she told me to make sure I let you know. And she says, praise the Lord. Yeah. This afternoon, this morning, you're only going to have to turn one time the book of 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And I have somewhat dealt in this area, but for some reason, the Lord has redirected me to this 
to talk about your wilderness experience. And I am certainly hmm? <laughs> hear him, hear him, hear him, hear him. I am troubled, yes, yes. yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair. I'm a vessel full of power. With a treasure none can compare. Persecuted, but not broken. Born in sin, but from sin set free. He's right there in the midst of everything that befalls your experience. Hallelujah. And that's what the praise by itself. Come on and give God a hand. Praise one more. Uh, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The book of 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And once again, I want to talk to your hearts and to make sure by the Spirit of God that is in me and that is in you that you don't lose heart in this period of time. Want to make sure that you, through the lens of the Holy Spirit, but look back and remember history and remember how God brought his people out most of you are very familiar with how God brought his people out of Egypt you are familiar with the mercies of God that led them by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night 
which represents the very presence of God. So no matter what trouble you find yourself, no matter what issue you may find yourself in, Jesus is right there with you. He told you he would be a very present help in the time of trouble. And then he said, I will be with you in the trouble and that I will bring you out. And so because you understand that he is with you and that he is in you, you ought to make sure that you do not lose heart. Don't allow yourself to be overcharged with suffidings and drunkenness. Hallelujah. And the cares of this life. Yes, Amen. Amen. Don't allow yourself to be overcharged by oppression Amen. and depression because of what you see that is surrounding you. All right. Amen. Come on now. Don't be surprised and don't be overcharged and charge God foolishly because you see what Hallelujah. is happening throughout the globe. God is still in control. He has not lost control. He has not lost his mind. He knows exactly what he's doing. I was talking to an individual and we were conversating concerning COVID-19 and they made a statement and said, I don't understand why God did this. I said, hold it, let me, let me clarify something. God didn't do this. God didn't do this. Man did this. God did not do this, but God is using this to bring his people exactly where they are supposed to be. God has a way of knocking the props from underneath you. Many of us in Christendom have depended on leaders and have leaned on leaders amen throughout the centuries but God has some kind of way decided he's taking leaders home and now you amen have to look to Jesus Christ for yourself and you can't hide behind your leader you now have to walk with God all by yourself and for yourself now you are in a position where you have to focus on him who sits upon the circle of the earth like he wants you to anyway Listen, my God, listen, 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 church of God, amen, in the book of Corinthians, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you what I feel and what's in my spirit and how I feel I'm directing, but I'm trying to stick with the paper, but yet I feel something else pushing me because God wants to change our mind in this wilderness experience. God wants to change your behavior in this wilderness experience. He wants to change your thought pattern, amen, in this wilderness experience so that you do not find yourself repeating what Israel did when she was brought out of Egypt by the hand of the Lord. In the book of Corinthians, the 10th chapter, I'm going to read, and stay with me, I'm reading from the NIV version just for clarity, all right? Amen. He goes on and he says in verse number one, for I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Yeah. They all ate the same spiritual food. Yeah. There was no difference. There was no food for you. There was no food for you, and there was no food for them. They all, the Bible says, ate the same spiritual food. Being the country boy that I am, I grew up in a time where my grandmother would make food, and my mother would make food, and whatever was made, that's what you ate. Yeah. Or you went to bed and didn't eat nothing. Yeah. You didn't do like a lot of these children do now. They go and get a bowl of cereal because they didn't like what was made. My grandmother taught me, she said, it's not what you what, it's not what you want, but it's what make your belly stick out. Hallelujah to God. So understand they ate the same spiritual food. 
they drank the same spiritual drink yeah. ah, from the spiritual rock that accompanied them that was with them yeah. that walked alongside them and it makes it clear who that rock was and that rock was Christ verse number 5 nevertheless he says God was not pleased with most of them now you can stop right there hold on these are the same people that have been brought out he makes it very clear to us that they were brought out of Egypt they were all baptized under the cloud of Moses yeah. amen and the sea they all ate the same spiritual meat they all drank the same spiritual drink but it makes it very clear that God was not pleased with some of them yeah. well I want to make sure that you are not a part of the group where he says he was not pleased uh, with some of them. Is it a possibility to be brought out of sin and degradation and not walk with God? Yes. Is it a possibility to come out of where God brought you and still go back and dibble and dabble in sin? Yes. God will never make an individual do anything against their will. God will will give you every opportunity to walk in real walk in the power that he has given you. Sis, if you can give me a little bit more mic, I appreciate it. Thank you. He goes on and he says in verse number, he says, nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Verse number six, he says, now these things occurred as examples to us from the setting our hearts on the evil things that they did. He makes it very clear. These things were written for our learning or for our admonition yeah. that we don't go back and do the same things that we once did before God brought us out. Yeah. Child of God, I want to talk to your hearts today because amen, it is imperative that you understand the time that we're in. Yes, COVID-19 has occurred and it has shut down the known world. Yes, amen, but everything that has taken place round about us, amen, we're looking at death on every side, every venue, every business, every church, every leader, amen, it does not matter who you are, you have been affected by what is taking place, how the children have been affected by, amen, this having to be at home, now they've got to learn virtually, and that means that the parents have to be patient with the children, hallelujah to God, are you listening to me today? Now we are thrusted, amen, into something that we have never known before. Hallelujah to God. But understand this. This is not new at this time. Yes, it is new for many of us. Yes, amen, it is new because we've never seen anything of this magnitude. There used to be, amen, the yellow fever in 1793. There was the swine flu in, two, in 2009 to 2010. We did find that there was a man, the polio epidemic in 1916. Then we have the Spanish flu from 1918 to 1920. Amen. Then we find there's another pandemic called HIV or AIDS from 1981 to the present. The West African Ebola took place 2014 to 2016. Hallelujah. So now we are trusted, amen, into this type of pandemic known as COVID-19. God is still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he took people through these times, he will take you through the same time. Because he's the same God. He does not change. He doesn't change his mind. Nothing catches him by surprise. And so you have to make yourself a committee of one to make sure that in this wilderness experience, Lord have mercy.
desires for you. Do exactly what has been designed, amen, for you to do. Yeah. God always provides provision in the wilderness, yet it is a place where you feel abandoned. I was talking to some of the saints and they were expressing upon the loss of our leader yeah. they were expressing how they feel abandoned and I can only say I know what that feels like because this is my first rodeo so to speak yeah. I've never lost a pastor before yeah. but I can understand the feeling a man that is never known to me but yet there are those who have lost two and lost three and felt the yeah. same thing there are those who feel like I feel numb because my leader is gone but uh, this is a part of living you still gotta walk with God and know him for yourself you still gotta cry loud and spare not you still gotta crucify your fallen nature you still gotta keep your flesh under subjection because your allegiance is not to the leader but your allegiance is to none other than Jesus Christ the righteous y'all drawn up I can feel it already but you understand where I'm coming from death is still a part of living people have always come and gone when your tenure is done then you'll find yourself in, it, in the portals of heaven yet everybody else that have not gone you are still still obligated to walk with Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are still obligated to, to give God what he wants. Yeah. You are still obligated to give God praise and to allow him to stand tall in your spirit. Yeah. You now gotta know him for yourself. You now gotta fast and pray. Some of you your wilderness experience may not be the same as mine. Some of you have lost children. That might be your wilderness experience. Some of you have lost loved ones and mates. That might be your wilderness experience. Some of you are on the verge of being evicted. That may be your wilderness experience. But understand some of you may be losing a job here or there. That might be your wilderness wilderness experience but understand in the midst of that uncertainty in the midst of that pain in the midst of that God leads you to the wilderness which is a special place where the Israelites established their identity as the people of God your wilderness experience is where now you establish your identity in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is when you find out how much power you got when hell done broke out in your house and you still gotta come to church and you still gotta pray. My mind goes back when I lived in San Bernardino. Amen. We had a house fire and I still had to get dressed and, and come to church after leaving Motel Six with my entire family and my dog. And I still had to go to church and preach that Jesus still saves. Yet in my mind and in my heart, I may have felt a some certain kind of way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We all feel some sort of kind of way sometimes. It don't mean that you don't trust God. It's just at that moment, you feel some sort of kind of way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep on living. You'll find out you're going to feel some sort of kind of way. Well, amen. I had to keep on preaching. I had to keep on testifying. And then took my family and went back to Motel 6 until Wednesday night. Then went back to teach Bible class. Wilderness experience. When you lose everything you have. Can I say this to you in passing? Yeah. Be very careful.
therefore, uh, sometimes uh, you will say things and God uh, will put you to the test uh, just to see do you really mean what you said. Uh, I can recall from an honest standpoint, uh, I would always say, uh, let me tell you now, uh, I'm going to be very clear and honest with you. Uh, I had never experienced this before. Uh, are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, we lost everything. Uh, and here I am. Uh, I was always testifying uh, about how I'm going to praise God uh, when he walks up in your house uh, and snatch out everything you got. Uh, why did I do it? Uh, can I be honest with you? Uh, because I heard somebody else say, yeah. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, here it comes. Uh, well, we lost everything. Uh, and I still had to come to church uh, and still give God glory. Uh, now that became a testimony. Uh, but now I still got to praise Him. Uh, when you lose everything you got, uh, you still got to thank Him. You still got to praise Him. Though it's a wilderness experience, though it's painful, though it's uncertain, you still got to give God the glory and the praise. Clap your hands. number six now these things occurred for our examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did Lord have mercy church of God hear me today don't you charge God foolishly don't you get angry with God don't you start shaking your fist at him he's still in control hallelujah to God Shall we bless him for all the good and not bless him for the bad? He said in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Learn how to praise him even when you don't feel like it. Learn how to praise him when your heart says something different. Learn how to praise him when all hell has broken loose in your house. Hallelujah. When your husband walks off and leaves you. Still come to church and give God the praise. When your wife walks off and leaves you, keep on giving God honor. When your children don't want to walk with God, you keep on walking with Him. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. He goes on. Well, I feel like preaching now. So say yeah. He said don't be an idolater as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in memory. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. How many to God? Is that what your Bible says? We ought not to indulge as we've seen them do. I don't care. Listen. Listen to me carefully. We are watching, uh, amen, everything. Uh, we are moving to a place uh, where it seems that everything is acceptable to God, uh, acceptable in His sight. Uh, we're trying to give God fig leaves uh, that He don't want. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, we have to deal with an issue, uh, amen, with my granddaughter. Uh, she was watching a show that was about 16 minutes, I believe. Uh, and it was all about uh, an individual who was afraid uh, to tell his mama uh, that he was in a homosexual relationship and it happened to be a cartoon uh, well uh, so say yeah well I tried uh, my wife said and talked to my granddaughter uh, to try to bring her to a place uh, where she understood what she was watching uh, and finally for me to be honest with you first of all 
wall, she ain't but 18, I do what she lie. But I said a child that don't have the Holy Ghost. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. You can't help yourself. You don't do what your father dictates to you to do. Are you listening to what I'm saying in your day? So say yeah. Stop trying to get your children. Amen. To do what's right. But ain't got power to do it. I don't even argue with grown folk. How little did it go? So say yeah. And so she had to turn around and got her understanding. She said, Grandma, I know this ain't right. Why? She said, because I saw him kissing the other man. But what they're trying to do now is they're trying to make it where it is acceptable and it's a part of the norm. They're even pushing it into the curriculum in the schools. Say it's a part of the norm. Now hear me clearly. Just because you are born again of the water and the spirit does not give you the right to mistreat anybody. I don't care how they feel. I don't care what they do. Hallelujah. That's been a misnomer among the saints. They think just because a person lives a certain way, you have the right to be mean to them. I rebuke that spirit. That's not Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You do not have the right to, to call people out of their names just because you say. That's all right. I know. They can't give you what they ain't got. Uh -huh. A homosexual ain't no different than an adulterer. Even a lesbian ain't no different than somebody that's in bestiality. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Hallelujah to God. They ain't no different than a liar. They still got to repent just like everybody else. Hallelujah. If you like women, you got to repent. If you like men, you got to repent. If you're an adulterer, you got to repent. If you're a liar, you still got to repent. Sugar daddy, don't let him let it go. You gotta repent. If you got a sugar mama, you gotta let him go. You got to repent. Yeah. Yeah. He says. Mm. I've been in church a long time. And I watched how we've acted. I said, Lord, this ain't you. Uh huh. Ain't you. This altar is for everybody. Yeah. The brokenhearted, the broken in spirit, because that's where everybody is. Yeah. Listen to me. When you leave this place, always remember this. No matter what you see people doing, they got a backstory. Yeah. No matter what you see people into, there's a backstory. By the time you understand the backstory, you won't be so critical and judgmental. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Now listen, I'm not telling you to be tolerable. Don't get it mixed up. You call sin, sin, but we call sinners to repentance. He that with his souls is wise. You have to be harmless as a dove, my Lord, and wise as a serpent. Now, God knows I don't like no snake. But you got to be wise like them. Amen, amen, amen. Lord have mercy You can't be like the snake's tongue They got two ends Let your yay be yay And your nay be nay Your own wilderness experiences Are going to bring you to a place Where you're going to know him Who sits upon the circle of the universe You're going to know him In the power of his resurrection And the fellowship of his suffering Let me finish this He goes on and said 
Verse 9. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. Are you listening to me? I remember when we first got married, my wife and I used to walk through Hawthorne Mall. Some of y'all remember Hawthorne Mall. And it was the pit uh, place. And there was this big glass. And there was this python laying behind the glass. And we were walking. Now my wife know I'm scared of snakes. And she, let me, I'm going to confess it. I almost locked her. Because I was scared. She pushed me up against that glass with that python laying there looking at me. No, no. Because, when, see, there's some things that grip your heart. She almost got socked. Now, listen, I don't believe in hitting women. But that day, I was scared. Don't give me wrong, I ain't pushed the sense. I'm just telling you, sometimes your reaction can be a knee-jerk reaction. But all God wants you to, He don't want you to have a knee-jerk reaction. He wants you to rest in Him. Because He has the power to sustain you and to carry you through on the eagle's wing. He says, and do not grumble or murmur and complain as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Verse number 11. He says, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us. You are no different. I ain't no different. He ain't no different. She ain't no different. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? We cannot see men as trees. Yes, sir. Because what God says is, I'll let flesh drop in your face. I'll let flesh, flesh fall in front of you. Because I told you, don't put your confidence in nobody's nature. Put your confidence in me. Oh, are you listening to me? They were written for our examples. They were written for our learning. Hallelujah. That we don't do the same things that they did. Upon whom the culmination of the ages has come. We're right here. You have never seen so much flesh on parade in all of your life. In the book of Genesis. God came looking for Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. There was always communion. He came looking for them. Now we all know that God is omniscient, omnipresent. He knows everything at the same time, all the time. But he asked the question, Adam, where are you? He said, I hid myself because I was naked. Who told you you was naked? How did you know you was naked? Can I be honest with y'all? There was a time when we all walked around butt naked. There was no shame. There was nothing. But because Adam ate from the tree. Who told you you was naked? God knew it. Have you eaten from the tree? Of which I told you not to eat? See, the reason why God 
said, Adam, where are you? It's because I don't know this Adam. You have eaten from the tree of which I told you not to eat. So everything in Adam, all DNA changed. Because remember, Adam had dominion over everything. But when he ate of the tree, his DNA changed. Adam, where are you? Where are you? I didn't create this sinful Adam. Remember what the scripture said. The first man was of the earth. Earthy. The second Adam was the Lord from heaven. So because you ate from what I told you not to eat. Now I got to curse you. Now I got to put you out the garden. Man, yeah. it's expulsion. I got to put you out. Because if you get back to the tree in your condition and eat, you'll live forever in that. You wonder why you got such a struggle? It's because of Adam. If it be such a thing, if I get to heaven, I'm going to slap Adam. <laughs> you have brought us into this. All because now listen, listen, listen to me carefully. Brothers, if you sit next to your wife, don't look at her. Adam didn't want to be by himself. So she gave to him, he ate. She was told what not to do. So, because he didn't want to be alone. Because everything in the garden I named, and don't nobody look like me yeah. but her. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he ate, he left his father, which is why husbands leave their father's house and go and marry and cleave unto their wives. She ate. So since you ate, woman, in childbearing, you will be cursed. So the fruit of your womb will come out in complete pain all the days of your life. I've heard women, ah, I've never done it again. Now you got six. <laughs> Could have been that much pain. Now we can't take it. Now man, because you ate willfully. Because the man wasn't deceived. He was. He ate willfully. So because you ate willfully, cursed is the ground for your sake. You go work by the yeah. sweat of your brow all the days of your life until you return to the dust. The serpent, because you beguiled the woman. Because see, at that time, he walked upright. Just like me, just like you. That's what I'm saying. You something you don't see. You better be careful and watch because there's some demons that still walking upright. They just want to get hooked up with you. So here you are uh, because you beguiled the woman. Cursed are you on your belly so you crawl all the days of your life and you will eat of the dust of the ground. All of a sudden Shh. Ma, 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 ma. Now he's slithering. I told you, the only thing that you need, when it comes down to me, personally, being country, the only thing, when it comes down to a snake and me, I just need a hole. Because right. I'm cutting heads off. Yeah. Ma, 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 ma. It's your church, sir. I'm not talking. <laughs> this is why you have to have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You have to discern 
Satan comes as an angel of light. Mm, be careful. When he comes as an angel of light, he looks good. He looks like he's right. But the one thing he can't do is live nothing. So be careful for these even in your wilderness experience that show up. How come now, so I'm not the only one that have had this experience. How come as soon as you start really going through things, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, people who you ain't never heard from in years show up at that time? <laughs> Here you are trying to get to a place in God. You are fasting. You're praying. Yeah. You're going to work. You ain't said nothing. Then all of a sudden, people want to buy you lunch. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the enemy loves to try to lure you back, amen, into slavery. The Bible says he has his prisoners captive at his will and won't let them go. Yeah. But look at us. We've been delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. We've been delivered by the grace of God. The wilderness experiences that we have had has taught us how to stand firm under the heat of the day. Yeah. Oh, that's why I told my, my home church. Amen. On Wednesday night when I was teaching Wednesday afternoon when I was teaching Bible class. Don't you start cussing and fighting. Don't you start lying and acting a fool. Stand firm on what God gave you. Be instant in prayer and ask God to give you what you have need of. Yes. He will. He will. Yes, he will. Because see, this is no different. This is what happened when Moses went away. I think the old saying, when the cat's away, uh -huh. the mice will play. Yeah. Teach the church, sir. Y'all, come on, y'all. Don't look at me like that. You know how you get when the boss ain't looking? Yeah. Amen. Come on, that brief. You trying to see what you get away with. You know you off at 3 o'clock, and you in the bathroom at 10 minutes till. Because you can't. Don't hurt him, brother. Don't hurt him. Oh. He says. He says. So if you think you are standing firm, come on. Be careful that you don't fall. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed God. Listen to me. Temptation is not sin. That's right. Mama, mama, help us, help us, sir. That's right. That's the book. Some of the saints have stopped walking with God because they got tempted, mm -hmm. and it was a heated temptation. It's not sin. The enemy's trying to bring you back to where you once were. Yeah. It's not sin. Jesus. I was taught by the late Dr. Norman Jackson. If the enemy comes to you and tries to bring you into subjection, mm -hmm. tell him, not right now, give me a minute. <laughs> that will buy you five or ten minutes to get your head in the right place. <laughs> Don't just go for the okie doke and say, come on, uh, you we got it. Uh. No, just, just give me ten minutes. Give me ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That way, it'll buy you some, maybe the former way, because God says he'll make a way of escape for you, and you can bear it. Maybe somebody will knock on the door. <laughs> One of my brothers, this sister showed up at his house. I said, sister, showed up at his house, his apartment. Friday night. And, oh, I just want to come see how you're doing. <laughs> Can we watch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> sure so sure we can watch a movie. We watch a movie. They were watching something, I can't think what it was. And he said, he went to the bathroom. He took his cell phone, went to the bathroom. 
He called one of the brothers that lived around the corner. He said, bro, so-and-so's at my house. I need you to come over here. I don't want to tell her to leave. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't want to tell her to leave. But I need some help. The brother showed up at the door. He knocks on the door. She, he, she said, he said, well, can you open the door for me? She opens the door. He said, hey, sis, praise the Lord, you got to go. <laughs> so glad to have you with us, but you got to go. So glad you came over, but you got to go. <laughs> Sometime in your weakest moment, you got to be honest with yourself. Amen, 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 amen. amen. <laughs> And vice versa. Yes, sir. Sisters, you ain't exempt. Yes, sir. All you gotta do is smell. Watch out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is that? Ah. Yeah. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Y'all looking at me. <laughs> come on now, come on now. Oh, I know, I know, I know. We sanctified. For us to be careful. Amen. But no temptation Amen. Amen. has captivated you right. or taken you except what is common to man. Yes, and God is faithful yes, that with the temptation, yes, he will make a way of escape yes, for you. Yes. We're in tax season. Oh, just sign right here. Oh, I'm getting back that? Oh. When you know there may be some lies through this. Come on. Thank you. I had to go back to Home Depot when I was in San Bernardino the other day because I bought a blind and what I did is I got a tape measure because they didn't have a tape measure right there where the blinds were so I could measure it. So I went on the other side, got a tape measure, came back, measured it, put the tape measure inside the cart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I got out, got ready to go, she scanned it, paid for the blind. I got out to the van to put the van, put the, excuse me, put the blind inside the van and realized the tape measure was still in the cart. Uh-huh. Oh, my, 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 my. Ooh, the Lord done blessed me. You take that tape measure right. and you take it right back in there right or give it to one of their employees. Amen. And that's exactly what I did because I realized, see, God has an all yes, seeing eye. Right. Yes, this might have been a test that slipped up on me. Yeah. Mama, amen, amen. Put it in. Amen. Because I, I could have lied. Right. Listen, you are not blessed because somebody gave you extra money. Amen. They made a mistake. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your integrity yeah. will open up the yeah. blessings yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. But if that's all you want, Come on now. it'll cost your soul too. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says. God is faithful that with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you can bear it. But when you are tested or tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That's what he'll do. He's going to provide it for you. Yeah. Just look for it. Hallelujah. Lord, this test is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Bless your name, Jesus. You have to learn how to strategize as you walk with God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Being the employer that I am, I have to make sure that I treat all of my employees right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
give them exactly what they deserve. Yeah. Check on them. Make sure they're all right. Yeah. Give them an opportunity. Come and talk to me if there's an issue that needs to be resolved. Yeah. I want you to know you matter. Yeah. We care for you. Yeah. It's just good old-fashioned customer service. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. People just want to be treated the way they want to be treated. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with that? They matter. They just want to know they matter. Yeah. Or they value. Yeah. Yeah. I know you know what I'm talking about. Because sometimes it ain't easy. You got to bite your tongue. Yeah. We've been in a position where my, some of my employees ask, they want us to lie for them. Can you see I make this kind of money so I can get my house? No, no. Y'all pay my strength. You know I'm saying this is what you want me to do. In one of our churches. All I'm saying, you have to be Diligent, your your allegiance is to Jesus Christ. Don't be in church and be known as a liar. You can be around church all your life and find yourself being a liar. Lord, help us. It costs heaven too much for you to have the joy that you have. It is a privilege to come into his house and to sit at his feet. It's a privilege to be able to let tears run down my face and not be judged for why I'm crying. Because when he comes into a room, he secures everything for you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Your wilderness experience will teach you how to fast. It'll teach you how to pray. It'll teach you how to depend on Jesus Christ. It'll teach you how to shut your mouth. You don't always have to give your mind. You done smoked so much weed before, you don't have that much left to give away. Keep your mind. Keep your mouth. Wisdom keeps your mouth. We won't know what kind of fool you are until you start talking. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we are your people. We are your people. We are your people. The sheep of your pasture. Father, I pray today, 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 not tomorrow. Today, we pray, let your blood wash through this place. Let your blood wash our hearts and wash our minds. Father, let your blood cleanse us as your people. For you are sovereign and there is none like you. For you are our strength, strength like no other. Father, we're asking you that you help us. Help us right where we are. Mm. Some people are angry with you because of circumstances beyond their control. Some people are displeased with you. They may not say it with their mouths, but their actions speak displeasure. Father, thank you for your mercies to your people. Thank you for just sitting and allowing us to go through our valley experiences and you are yet with us. Thank you for not allowing us to feel abandoned by your presence. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Father, we, your people, humbly bow our spirits to you. You know what we have need of. When our heart is overwhelmed within us, 
you lead us to the rock that is higher than I. Thank you for taking us by our hand and carrying us. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for being our strength when we're weak. When we don't feel like it, Lord, we thank you for stabilizing our emotions. Thank you. When we don't feel like it, Lord God, you're so cool. Ah, you are our secure. You secure us. Mm. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you, sir. To me, fire, yes. sweet perfume, oh. awesome presence yes. fills this room. I, 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 I. Consuming fire, yes. sweet perfume, yes. yes.
the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. That the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Go in peace and sin no more. We love you to life. And there's nothing you can do about it. I decree and declare that you all have a blessed week. And that the Lord will protect you. Because the hedge of protection is around you right now. In the name of Jesus. All right, go ahead, wherever you are, give God a shout. Give God, throw your head back, open up your mouth, throw your head back, and give God a shout. Clap those hands and give God a shout. I say, clap those hands and give God a shout. In the name of Jesus. God bless you as I pray.